These are the stories. There is a foundation out there that helps you get back into it. Of organizations making a difference. What really limits our ability to do something is people's imagination. And empowering others across Canada. When I get into that sledge, I'm free, man. I'm playing hockey. It's a great organization and it's worth supporting. In our community. It's a crisp, cool day in Vancouver, British Columbia, but the sun is shining, and Betty Noble takes an afternoon walk with her guide dog, Mac. Come on, Mac, forward. Always fun to learn a new place, isn't it? Claudia Caldwell, Coach Tyler, can I be honest, Betty? Back at home, she checks in with friends and family over email. I don't remember what I did with my cup. Oh, cup, where did, oh, there it is. Makes some tea and, as always, playfully teases her husband, Don. No. I suppose you'd like some too, would you? Yeah. Well, you'll have to pour your own. Pour my own? Uh-huh. As they prepare for a night out at the theater. My name is Betty Noble. I'm sitting with my husband, Don, who's right to my left. And my dog, Mac, is somewhere in the room. I think maybe behind my chair. Um, Mac comes from um, BC Alberta Guide Dogs, and he's very young. We just began our training in August. There we are. Good boy, Mac. But he's my seventh guide dog, so I have a lot of experience. We just have to get to know each other and adjust to each other. Okay, one more. Good boy. We're going to go on the bus and we're going to go and see an awesome play. Forward, boy. Live performance was an experience that Betty found somewhat limited until she discovered a program called Vocal Eye. I've been blind since birth, basically. I was a premature baby and um, too much oxygen in the incubator destroyed my retinas. So I have never been able to see. Vocal Eye is a program largely run by volunteers that provides verbal description to blind or partially sighted guests, opening up opportunities to engage in the arts and a play on a broader level. Yep. I've seen several bo vocal eye plays, Wicked and Mary Poppins and the Buddy Holly story and others, and they're absolutely wonderful. And with description, it just makes it even better. Adding to her independence is a newly installed braille system provided by TransLink in Vancouver. The project is just in its beginning stages, but our uh, transit system in, here in Vancouver is going to start putting braille signage at all of the different bus stops and SkyTrain stations. Do you stop at Granville Street? Yes, ma'am. Oh, then let's get on. We found it. So we'll get on the Granville Street bus, and then we'll get off at 12th Avenue and find the theater. And thanks to Vocal Eye, Betty's enjoyment of the play is just as enriching as a sighted experience. We're people first, and our disability is just part of who we are. And they sometimes forget about that and allow the disability to define who we are. They don't even realize that people who are blind like to go to a play or a movie. Thank you. Tonight, Betty and Don are going to the Stanley Industrial Alliance stage in Vancouver. It serves as the main stage for the Arts Club Theatre Company. Hi. Hi, I think there are some tickets for Betty and Don Nobel. Yes, let me check for you. Here are your tickets. Wonderful, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Enjoy your... Sure will. Okay, forward. Vocal Eye has described many performances at the Stanley, and tonight's described play is a comedy called Noises Off. Good boy, there. That's hi, me. Betty. Oh, hi there. Hi. Donna here a at the wonderful, table. Wonderful clue. <laughs> did you make it here all right? I sure did. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. My name is Donna Suarez, and I am the event and volunteer coordinator with Vocal Eye. And so what we're doing here tonight is we are at the Arts Club Theatre, the Stanley Theatre, and we are describing Noises Off. Uh, we're describing it for patrons who are blind and low vision. So I've got your receiver for you here. Oh, terrific. Do you need the earpiece as well? Yes, please. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to hand the receiver over.
over to you. Okay. And so what happens is our patrons come and they get a receiver and they'll have an earpiece. And so through one ear, they will hear our describer, who is Eileen tonight. And then through the other ear, they can still hear the actors on stage. Now there's a dial on the receiver itself. Historically, um, it, theater hasn't been accessible for patrons who are blind and low vision. And so it's really important for people um, to be able to come to the theater, feel like they're welcome at the theater, and feel like they can participate just like everyone else. All right, that sounds good. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Do you need a hand to your seat? Um, I think um, my husband's with me, so I think we'll um, probably be able to find it okay. Okay, perfect. Enjoy. This groundbreaking program all started in Vancouver, British Columbia, thanks to Steph Kirkland, a former theater director. Bokalai Descriptive Arts is the first live descriptive program for the blind in Canada. And the unit works okay? Yes. Thank you. Enjoy the show. I sure will. When we started, nobody realized that this would be a viable thing to do. In fact, the, the assumption that we were faced with when we went to the theaters with this idea was, why should we do this? Blind people don't come to the theater. And now we've proven that, in fact, they do. But you just have to take the time to invest in the service to make them welcome. And it's more than just offering description. It's making them feel welcome on, in, at every level. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. As Betty and Don settle in for the show, the vocal eye describer warms up her listeners with some pre-show information. I'm going to be doing a lot of talking in this play, far more than, than usual. The success of the vocal eye program comes down to the describer's performance and is a vital link for the listeners to not only capture the action on stage, but to also understand the physical environment in which the play takes place. A describer fills in the blanks of the visual details for someone who can't see those details and what's missing from the audio that people are receiving. So to not be redundant, to not over-describe, to not under-describe, it takes a lot of practice. Since this is a classical farce and play within play, the doors are all important. The eight doors and one window will be opening and shutting a lot as people run in and run out. Trained describers watch the show probably about three times before the actual description night, and they will decide what description is important to impart to our uh, patrons. And so they will actually go through and they'll write a script, and they have to finesse uh, their script so that it fits in with the dialogue of the actors. It brings to life added dimensions of the performance. So that requires viewing the show, being familiar with the show, so you understand what it is that you're looking at, you understand what it is that you're describing. Just before the show, they do a description of the different characters, a little bit about their personalities, and a lot about their clothing and their physical characteristics. She is 23 years old, 4 feet 11 inches tall, with a childlike round face, big brown blinking eyes, under wire-rimmed glasses. You get a description of not only the actors, but the scenery as well. What we see is the living room of a country house. In the middle of the room is an eight foot long rectangular carpet of bright multicolored geometric figures with a wide black border. It's not about calling attention to ourselves as describers. It's really we serve the work that we're describing and we serve the listener who we're describing for. So we ideally, it's great if we just kind of blend into the whole experience. So we'll be getting underway in just a couple of minutes. So we're just waiting for Peter, audience services manager, to come to the front and then we'll soon be underway. This performance will be described for audience members who are blind and partially sighted by Vocal Eye Descriptive Arts. To find out more about upcoming described performances, please visit the Vocal Eye table in the lobby. And now, without further ado, may we present Michael Frayden's Noises Off. The lights bounce up brightly as Mrs. Clackett, Dottie, strides in through the kitchen door holding a plate of sardines. It's no good you going on. I can't go put sardines and answer the phone. I've only got one pair of eight. Picks up the phone receiver. Hello? The importance of live description, I think, is 
in the inclusive aspect of things. And the best part of description for me, too, is when I can describe a comedy, that's my favorite. Everybody but sells in comes in from all the doors, picking their way across the room, slowly peering on the floor. <laughs> when I can nail the laugh, that is the best, like, because I know that people who are in the audience who are blind will be able to laugh with everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> when Vocali people describe the action of a play, you're much more into the story. Uh, it gives you a better idea of what the characters are doing, what's happening. It's more like reading an audio book, in a way. And um, it, it gives you much more information than previously. I, I have no vision at all, and so I can't see anything visually that's happening on stage. So I really appreciate knowing what is going on. And it really is a shared experience to know what's going on on the stage. <laughs> The blind and partially sighted community has emphatically embraced this service. And from humble beginnings, Vocal Eye has now expanded to a range of live events, providing description to fireworks, the Vancouver Pride Parade, festivals and public art tours. They provide sighted guide training, a ticket access program to help with lowering ticket prices, a theater buddy program to help participants safely get to and from live events, and they've expanded to other cities, like Victoria, where they do live description at the University of Victoria and the Belfry Theater. Getting the word out to people who are blind and partially sighted is an ongoing challenge, but ideally I'd like to see something like Vocali in every major center. I think it's incumbent on, on organizations that are large public organiza arts organizations to offer as much accessible programming as possible. At the iconic Belfry Theatre in Victoria, 10-year veteran describer Rick Waynes is one of those volunteers helping Vocali participants connect and engage in their community. I like that I have to see a bunch of plays. I love plays, I write plays. I like that it forces me to understand a play, so that's good cross-training. So this is my little room. Uh, there's just enough room to operate. This is my transmitter. It's uh, a, a low frequency FM transmitter. And then attached to that is a, a mask that is uh, it's called a stenographer's mask. I guess people who are doing court reporting wear them. It fits tightly over my mouth so that uh, I'm much less likely to be heard describing shows. Good afternoon, my name is Rick, and I'll be describing Main Street Grace Street today in Vancouver, Vocal Eye. When a call first went out asking for people to come and do this training, I think we were like, oh my God, people can't come to the theater. Let's make that not be a thing anymore. So I love that, that folks who love the theater get to see it. You have to work on learning how to breathe with these things on because you can't breathe in the mask or, or it sounds like that. And if you can imagine, it's annoying enough having me talking to you throughout a play. If I'm also breathing in your ear, it's uh, bad news. When I first started doing the work, I chose the describe everything approach. And I had a, a very helpful patron one day say, you know, I had to turn you off. <laughs> Just, that's too much. So uh, over the years, I've in fact, described less and less. Only the action that is uh, important to understand or that lends meaning to what's happening on stage. Once I'm set up here and I know that everything's working, I go downstairs to uh, connect with the patrons because uh, that's important. Uh, theater is about uh, connecting with our community and uh, so it's important for me to get to know people and for them to get to know me. Local Eye Descriptive Arts is not just about providing services for people who are blind. It's also about getting blind people engaged and participating because they have so much to offer. They have a different perspective on the world than we have, and we have so much to learn from that. Theatre is another place where people come to be inside of community, and I think feeling like you're, you're included is important. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. The performance at the Belfry Theatre is about to get underway. One of the patrons eagerly awaiting the show is Douglas Crow, 
a long-serving theater supporter and vocal eye participant. What's going on before? I'm uh, here in the Belfry Theater, uh, enjoying a great play and uh, a described play, which is a huge help to me. Just enjoy being uh, being in a play where they actually do this. They didn't used to do it when I first came to Belfry. It was none of this. Hangs the shovel on the side of the truck. And the young woman approaches. Hello there. Hello. <laughs> Are you lost? Lost? In terms of my initial reaction was just a blank stage. So until the sound came on, uh, I really thought I was looking at nothing much. And then hearing the words describing who's coming on or what's where was a huge help. Touches Grace's hair. Grace picks up a string of tin cans. How do you like my blonde hair? I mean, this really was essential for me to enjoy, it, even though I was sitting fairly close and I could see some outlines. I'm Lizzie May. Hugs Grace hard. It's a pleasure. Bye bye. Dashes away. Sweet magnolia. In recent years, Vocal Eye has added another layer to the theatrical experience called Touch Tours. So is it all right for us to come up now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, come on so up. folks, can we gather at the at the stairs here? Douglas, that's to your right. Patrons are given access to the stage and props either before or after the performance. Behind me, right now on this side, uh, we have Kane's trailer. This added layer serves as a way to firm up the descriptive information they may have already received and provides them with extra details participants might miss visually. Touch tour, yes. That was astounding to, to find these vehicles were parts of vehicles and go up to the, the trailer and feel it. Uh, it all seemed so real that there was a real trailer there and this truck seemed bigger and then to come up and find it's half a vehicle and it's, <laughs> it's only just stuck together with glue or however you guys do it was astounding. This fabric here is are the blankets that, that okay. she's hung over the rope. They're invited to explore the space and even handle selected props, costumes, and furniture. So this duffel bag is interesting. It, Clem brings it in at the end. Uh, and the only reason it exists is it <laughs> gives something for uh, our actor, Lara, to hit with a shovel. Oh, it sounds geez. like Kane's head. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and it's got a pocket in it that gets filled with blood, so they pull it out of there. So when you hit it, it's kind of a... Oh, okay. Sound. That bag was astounding. That, that, that was the body they clobbered. What a good idea. And just feeling the smaller pieces, that little lamp and the stool. It's a stand and a little stool that side. Wow, I'd be falling off the darn thing. Yeah, all in all, excellent. Really excellent. Yeah. The, the opportunity for tactile exploration gives these patrons with little or no sight a much appreciated and oftentimes necessary tangible sense to get more detail and may even go beyond what sighted patrons experience. We go up, we talk about the set, we talk about maybe some of the ideas about how the set was built. And it's a really, it's kind of like a behind the scenes moment, which is pretty exciting that not everyone gets to have. And then when we're lucky, and at the Belfry we always are, uh, some of the company comes out and introduces themselves. And so there's a bit of a personal relationship getting built with the performers, which everybody loves. How do you feel about performing a play like this from like from the 50s and what the attitudes were. I think some of the, the, the way that we speak, like some of the language even is different era from now. Mm -hmm. So I used to think my job was to level the playing field. On a good day, our folks would come and have a, a similar experience to sighted patrons. I've since understood that through our different programs like touch tours, I feel like we can actually potentially on a good day, provide a better experience for our patrons. It's a wonderful world to live in. I mean, you know, it's interesting <laughs> to play as actors. Anyway. First of all, on behalf of Vocal Eye, this is a, a really uh, a treat for us to be able to do these touch tours. And the Belfry has always been super accommodating. And also, typically, today's no exception, uh, cast and crew have always been really great at, at, at making this a, a really uh, special day at the theater. Uh, thanks everyone uh, for your time. It's really so important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope Vocal Eye does continue. I hope it continues to spread out to more people, encouraging us vision loss 
people to get out and participate because it's so much richer to be out and be in live theater. Yeah, it's, it's terrific. Keep on doing it, please. Back in Vancouver, Betty and Don Noble are enjoying the final scenes of Noises Off. <laughs> And that is the end of Noises Off. Thank you so much for joining us for tonight's performance. It was a pleasure describing the show for you today. Please return your equipment to the table in the lobby, and thank you so much for listening. Good boy, Mackie. Okay, sit. Good boy. Okay, let's go. For the couple, their adventure out at the Stanley Theatre has been a fulfilling and fun experience. I would say it was definitely a good night out. I really enjoyed it, and I was just so impressed with the way the lady described it. I just, I'm still amazed. I can hardly find the right words to talk about it because she did such an amazing job. And you don't realize, as a blind person, until you've been to a described play, how much you actually missed when you don't have that description. It's really quite spectacular, and it's a real, Difference, huge difference. For Vocal Eye, this is exactly the type of reaction they're hoping for and have worked so hard to create. The describer was just amazing. Oh, good. I just, I couldn't get over. That would be so hard to describe, and she was just right, right with it. Oh, good. I'll let her know because she certainly feels like this one's a tough one. So Very I'll let her know that tough. You enjoyed it. That was really something. Oh, great, great. And for founder and executive director Steph Kirkland, she's always looking for new ways in which to expand the reach of the program. It's constant consultation with the community. What are you interested in? I might have an idea about something that I'd like to try to, like, I, it's, well, I have a theater background, so I'm passionate about the theater. So sharing that love with people and introducing people to it who might not be familiar with it is, is so rewarding. So being able to provide the description to make it more accessible to people is, is just so rewarding. Betty and Don's night has come to an end, but Betty is hopeful for the future of Vocal Eye. She knows firsthand the enriching experience Vocal Eye brings to whatever it describes and is excited for the future. Not only for herself, but her entire community. I really love it and I would hope that eventually something like Vocali or Vocali itself could expand to other cities in the country and so that other blind and partially sighted people could enjoy it as much as I do and many of my friends as well who are blind and or partially sighted they come to the theater and they really have a great time and they enjoy it and, and we, we just now get so much out of it so much more than ever we used to. Producer Mike Waverkan, director Adrian Sala, writers Adrian Sala, Richard Fulop, production manager Sam Graham, director of photography Luke Connor, location audio Mark Planeden, editor Richard Fulop, sound mix David Parfit, integrated described video specialist Simone Cupid, narrator Jim Van Horn. Graphics Andrew Antonello, Regional Content Specialist Sylvie Fiquet, Coordinating Producer Jennifer Johnson, Consulting Producer Colette Vosberg, Director Production Kara Nye, Director Programming Brian Perdue, VP Programming and Production John Melville, President and CEO David Arrington. Produced with the participation of Canada Media Fund. Copyright 2020 Accessible Media Inc.